you've got to go out and walk the property. Understand what you have there. Make sure that the property is not in a flood zone. What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to discuss with you 12 common pitfalls and mistakes that can derail your raw land investing. I'll cover everything from understanding the fundamentals of raw land investing, performing due diligence, and implementing some of the best practices to ensure your investment can remain profitable and more importantly, it'll be sustainable for the long term. All right, so what is the first issue that comes up that's critical you need to be aware of? It's road access and maintenance. Making sure that the property that you're considering buying, that it has access, that there's a road there and who's going to maintain it, especially if, if it's joining another piece of property. You wanna look into that and make sure you nail that down before you take title of this property because there's a lot of responsibilities that can come up with road maintenance. Maybe your property is the one required to maintain the entire road. So check into that. Second thing you have to look at is landlocked properties. And this comes up a lot when people are buying on land. You don't wanna get involved in a deal where the property itself is not accessible, that there isn't an easement across the property or you're gonna to have to invest a ton of money to push a road through. I've had situations before with clients who have bought property only to find out it was landlocked and they couldn't access the property without going to court, forcing the other party to allow them access to enforce an easement that they had in the deed to the property, but it came at significant uh, cost. Another thing is that if you don't have an easement to access the property, then you have to go possibly buy an easement by prescription, which means more additional fees to convince a court that you need to have access to this property. If you don't have access to it, most of the time you want to walk away from that deal. Okay, the third issue that comes up is going to be zoning or rezoning. You know, if you're buying the property, what do you intend to use it for? You need to know how that property is zoned to make sure it meets your investment criteria. Because if you have to go and rezone the property, is that even a potential for you depending on the area in which is where, where that property is located? So knowing the zoning requirements is a must. Now, number four, this is critical as well. It's called a site visit. You've got to go out and walk the property. Understand what you have there because you got to see whether maybe the property floods all the time, which can brings me to my next point. Make sure that the property is not in a flood zone. So this could create pro potential problems with you developing the property if you have flood issues there and it can get really expensive if you're not aware of that. So flooding and zoning are two very critical aspects of this. Uh, sixth thing you want to look at is the get the property surveyed and dis discover whether or not you have any timber rights all right to the property you know what can happen sometimes with real estate is that you see the land but you don't own the timber that's on the land because that was given to someone else in the original deed or mineral rights too what, what's underneath the land know what's available so the seventh issue is going to be subdividing that land knowing what you can do with it maybe you're buying that property and you think you can put three or four homes on it but in the restrictions on that particular property, the way it's zoned, you can only have two homes on that. So knowing the, the regulations and zoning is critical to make sure that your development is going to work out properly. Now, the eighth thing is utilities, of course, and, and whether or not you have connections that are already there at the property itself, or you, you have to bring those in. Listen, the, if the property perks, you've already got electricity there, uh, and you got cell phone, internet, and all that's for the property, great, that's going to be a good investment. But if you have to bring all that in, that can be quite taxing, which brings me to number nine, which is taxation. It's a great idea to know what's going to happen to that property when you purchase it. Maybe it has a certain designation now for taxes, but when the property is sold, those taxes could skyrocket on you because it's been grandfathered in. So you want to make sure you're researching what the taxes are associated with that land after it's going to be sold. Now, something else I would look at is if you intend to use that property or you're going to sit on it for a while and you want to use it for other uh, uses, Look at uh, campsite land or glamping, discovered whether or not it has that potential to generate income for you. I've got a great video on my site. Uh, you can check out the link below right down here that talks about how you can make money from leasing out your property to glamping or actually putting your own camper on there. Number 11, if you're buying raw land, look for land that has some type of existing structure on there. Because many times when it comes back to zoning, if you already have an existing structure, it makes that process of permitting that much easier because rather than starting from scratch, what you end up doing is you're saying you're remodeling something that's already existing. It doesn't matter if that structure is completely dilapidated, it's still your way in to get your permitting done that much quicker. This brings me to my last point when it comes to buying raw land. 
never buy it in your own name. You always want to take title in an entity that limits your liability exposure. Because let's face it, if people go out on your property and they injure themselves, they're going to hold you liable. People are hunting out there and they shoot someone. You're going to be liable for that. If you're buying property and you don't see it and you don't walk it and you don't follow all these tips right here, that can be a real problem because you don't know what undiscovered defects that may be there and how many people are using that property. It can bring liability back to you. So make sure you, do, you use an entity like an LLC to buy your property. If you want to learn more about raw land investing and how to set it up with limited liability companies or land trusts or corporations and the tax side of raw land investing, I'd like to invite you to our free tax and asset protection live event. There's a link in the show notes below. You can click on that. You can join me and my partner, Toby Mathis, as we go into details about LLCs and corporations and all of those different strategies, plus the tax side of investing. And more importantly, we're gonna have a team of our attorneys and CPAs on that will get your individualized questions answered. Look forward to seeing you there, guys.